what it is. Father Moo here. I really love this reverb setting on this patch. It's just golden. The tails on those hi-hats and white noise sounds is just sweet. Anyway, that's just what I wanted to share with you to start things off today. What's up? This is Father Moo doing the Moo thing. And uh, I was doing a couple of dub mix downs uh, in this new session recently, but I had a, a new idea today on the on the subway on the way to work. And uh, I thought I would put it into action here today. So uh, today we're going to make a... A melodic patch and it's also gonna have a little bit of percussion so it won't be super surprising it's not gonna be what I would call a Berlin school patch and I don't think it's really gonna be a dub patch either I think the closest uh, reference point will probably be a, a Game Boy type patch a lo-fi type patch but uh, there's a very simple circuit I wanted to build to uh, which is the one I came up with in my head. Uh, often uh, when I'm sort of mentally programming, I'm thinking about some of the littlest uh, building blocks that the Nord Modular works with or offers you, I should say. Uh, some of the things are more self-contained, like, for example, this clock gen... He has a couple of inputs, he has a couple of outputs, he has a couple of knobs. He's a fairly complex module by Nord standards, but if you compared it to something like braids in Eurorack, clock gen would look extremely simple. And many of the Nord modular pieces are even smaller than that. And one of the ones is my favorite little dude here, logic processor. You'd be hard pressed to find something as small as this in, in even in two HP of Eurorack. They'd probably give you two circuits of logic or, you know, a couple of other functions just because it would be so little. However, even these three knobs is a these three buttons are actually super powerful. Most of the time when I see Eurorack, it's a fixed option. You can have and, or you can have or, or you can have XOR. But you usually don't get all three selectable at the at the push of a button. I saw a build in a, a nonlinear circuits module called Bool's, and it gives you a whole bunch of these, but you have to pick which one you're going to use with resistors when you build it. So you, you could say, okay, all my I'm going to have four of these, and they're all going to be OR, but then you build the hardware that way, and it's done. And if you want four more with XOR, you've got to build the module again, and same thing with and. So that seems uh, that seems limiting to me in uh, in what you can do in Eurorack. Just these little pieces are just so useful. And by being little pieces, I almost want to say it's more modular. Like it's sort of like you know, like in Lego, you get some big specialized pieces. It might be like the wing of an airplane or something. But you could also build a wing out of a bunch of little, almost flat pieces yourself. So the Nord Modular leans towards the smaller bits. And modern Eurorack tends to lean towards bigger, more expensive modules that do a whole bunch. They have eight ins and eight outs, but these little pieces get either left by the wayside or they may be included as a sub-function but you may not even notice them or you may not um, use them to their full potential if you're only being given them as part of a bigger module. That's just why I'm drawing your attention to this today. So back to uh, my idea, and it is a very simple idea on the face of it. All I wanted to do was, I often have something like this where I'm clocking a, a pattern and I only really have one option with this pattern's output, which is 
to click the delta button. If you click delta down to low, the output will become uh, more scattered or more or just simpler, less busy, you could say. You'll get less hits per bar. And if you have it in this mode, you'll get more hits per bar. But sometimes even in this mode, it's still too much for me. Or you might have heard me program a drum and the drum is being fed its pattern from this pattern gen. And I say, yeah, it's too busy. There's too much going on. I say this a lot. So with this in mind today, I decided to uh, build one or I may build more than one circuit where the pattern generator is the main source of the pattern, but it feeds into a logic processor, which is going to be set to AND. And then this random pulse generator is going to be set to the other input. So that basically means when this light is on, the pattern is allowed through. When this light is off, it's not. So if this pattern was going to play multiple notes over four bars, now it's going to play a bit of silence when the light is off, and it's going to play whatever it would have played when the light is on. So, yeah, in order to make this pattern even more limited. That might seem quite kind of a simple build here and not exactly rocket science. And you could say, yeah, it's, it's, it's not if you want to call it that. And I won't really argue with you, but uh, it is the idea I came up with. So, so now let me build up uh, some other relatively standard or relatively expected bits of... Uh, bits of my voice here. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the old square wave today. I may skip pulse width modulation because since I'm going for a kind of Game Boy sound, let me put my digitizer in, um, a lot of early uh, video game machines, their sound sources were just very simple waves like squares and triangles. I was reading about the original NES, sometimes called the Famicom in Japan. And basically the NES could make square waves or it could make triangle waves. It didn't have a dynamic filter like this one, but it did have a fixed low pass filter in the audio circuit. So it was still giving a little bit of traditional subtractive synthesis to the sound, but it was fixed at a certain point and you couldn't, even if you were the programmer, you couldn't do anything to change it really. So, uh, it was pretty much locked in. Um, okay, let's take a look here. We're gonna need to do some. Uh, I've got the. I've got this one being the gate. There's the note. I'm just gonna turn that off for a sec. We'll get there. Uh, we need to do something to the pitch inputs of this guy so that it's uh, melodic and interesting. So let's get out the old uh, key quantizer. And I'm going to do my typical drop down to 32 here. And give him some notes. And what shall we feed this guy with? Why don't we try... Um, I think I want to make something similar to what we saw before where we have a uh, uh, shifting sources of uh, melody. So... Yeah, let's do this. I just made a copy of that and I'm going to take some of the notes out of one and some of the notes out of the other. Then I'm going to fade. I'm going to move that fader in a second. I'm going to fade between them. And the question is, what is driving them? So we could have a clocked random step generator. Everybody take a shot. We could also have a, a control signal mixer. We can also have a, hmm, why don't we try a second one? I don't know if that'll make a huge difference, but I'm going to try inverting it. I'm going to feed them the same. Ooh, that's even better. Why don't we try, 
feeding one of them a clock divider. If you're not following on with me here, I'm just coming up with a, a more complex CV pattern to feed to my uh, the input of my key quantizers. In other words, I'm trying to make some random CV, which I can later use to uh, make notes, which I will feed to yeah, the input of the of this guy here, the oscillator. So there's one channel, and it can go to here. And that will, we then are going to need a, is it C? Nope. Yep, the square wave uh, LFO. We shove him into the crossfade, max him out, turn this guy all the way to one side, and that will uh, randomly flip the switch from one side to the other. So we've got content for one input of the switch coming out of here, being fed by this, but this guy isn't being fed by anything yet. So let's give him a random sequence, a note sequencer, yep. Oh, I think I want B. B has the random button. Not that that's necessary, but it's faster. And I'm going to set him to an irregular number of steps because I think that's fun. I'm going to feed his output into this 32-note uh, key quantizer and feed him the same clock. So there we go. And although I have two inputs on this pitch input, I'm only going to need one because I've got the, the switch driving them there. And let's turn the speed of the switching down quite slow so we can hear first one and then the other. Okay, and hook up the gate so we can hear this whole thing. We're in good territory to start with, if you ask me anyway. I just uh, mapped the sample rate uh, to be modulated by a clocked random step generator. I'm going to do the same thing to the filter with a different one. Did I lose you there, Signal? There we go. Oh, that must have been the, uh, the random pulse generator telling him not to make a beat anymore. Okay, that's cool. It's understandable anyway. I wonder if a little bit of LFO... We'll sweeten the deal here. I was looking for a sine wave, but a triangle should do the same job. Getting very busy in the sequencing area down here. Let's repeat our uh, plans here. So here we have this circuit, as I said, was the beginning of my idea. I've just copied that circuit a couple of times. I'm going to change the patterns that are being held in the default. But the other, uh, yeah, I guess I can change the exact uh, on offness of the randomness. Yep. But the other setting and will remain the same for both. And the clock will remain the same. So you can feed him to there. And let's make a couple of drums and uh, see if we can feed them a digitizer and make them sound cool too. Give this little melody someone to work with. It doesn't sound much like a melody right now because the sample rate is being reduced so much that you lose you lose the note. But uh, we'll we'll solve that in a second. You can hear some of the notes, I guess. Plug these into the old mixer. Oh, I was going to digitize them, wasn't I? Yeah, I was. So, digitizer. And I know 
this is a different LFO from this one, so I'm going to feed it to here. And for my other weird LFO content, I'm going to take it out of the control mixer, feed it in there. And then for this guy, as I said, I'm going to increase his sample rate so we get more of the notes. For the drum, you hear that? For the drums, we're going to go up a little bit, not as high. It won't be as necessary. We can turn all of these off. And let's fire up some drums. Oh, we need the last cable connected here. There's the kick. Reverb is kind of overdoing it. Let's dial it back. We're still getting these very intermittent sections where everything goes quiet for a bit, which is what we planned. I think we can uh, introduce some randomness to the patterns as well, just so they're always changing. I think what we're kind of missing is something which is steady. We got lots of weird intermittent bits, but without a, a steady sort of pattern, all we're getting is the weirdness. So why don't we try, try event sequencer. And I'm gonna make a hi-hat. I think I'm going to leave the... Oops, I ran out of inputs. Let's make an 8 input mixer. I think I'm going to leave the hi-hat out of the digitization process because I think we've rung that bell pretty well on the first three voices. So let's just have the hi-hat be uh, clean to start off with. There's everything back. Dial down to the symbols, but we're probably going to have to modify one. Send the clock to the same clock source. Feed them like that. See what I mean? Now the randomness of the other bits has a, has a context to fit into. Despite what I said, I'm going to try digitizing this guy too. I mean, he sounds fine as he is, but he might fit the aesthetic better. See, I knew that I could do, if I put the quantizer on, I'd get like little tails to the sound. You hear how the decay is different? And then if I do this. I still get my regular pattern, but I get more variation across the board. Let's give him a big wide range. There we go. Now that's cool. Now even he is disappearing a little bit when uh, when his sample rate is too crazily modulated. But he still appears enough that you can hear him, right? That's kind of neat. Let's do a little tweaking on our melody voice. I wanted to come back to that. Until he appears again. Well, I almost wanted to see if I went up to 64, if I would get an even wider 
or what a wider range of pitches would do to my melody here. And just mute these other drums so I can hear what he's doing. I'm gonna mute him too. What the heck? I just turn this off for a bit. Some of those notes are ridiculously high. I think I need to go back to 32. I thought by opening the filter up more, I could let them through, but there's just too much of a pitch range. It's literally all over the piano keyboard. It's too much already. You turn this down a little. It's getting better. Part of me that wants to divide these uh, clocks even more. This one is feeding that one. I kind of want to take this out. Make another clock divider. I've really placed my modules poorly today. Send the source clock to him. And then send the divided clock to here. What if I turn this off and then fade this over? Yeah. And fade it back. It's good. Let's bring some of the boys back in. Come on, boys. I have very little power, processing power left, but I kind of want to see if I can... Uh, Make one other note, one other tonal. Oh, maybe I could do it with a percussion os. That's a crazy idea. Let's try using the second channel of the uh, hi hat sequencer. If you've got it already, trigger this guy. I just want something which is in the same key as the melody, so that they can uh, sort of play off each other. It's probably not 
the best uh, optimization here. This I'm now on my fifth digitizer. Should probably have run a couple of sounds into a mixer and then just digitize that output, but here we are. Crazy. It's good, it's not too loud. Kind of neat. It's kind of like a second kick drum that's tuned. Yeah. Well, that sure is a messy as heck patch. Uh, we. We didn't have enough room to fit all the CV for the first channel into one place, so it just got all it just got all messed up. Let's try to clean it up a little bit here. Here's his digitizer. This can be the put all the oscillators here. No, this is still CV here. So this second cha yeah, okay, fine. Let's do it that way. Okay, so in this, I don't know if anybody cares about this except me. All the oscillators are now in the middle row. Oh wait, sorry, one of them's not yet. There's the voice osc. There's the first kick. There's the snare. There's the hat. And there's the tuned kick drum. And now we got all the... Uh, audio processors in this fourth channel here a bunch of digitizers we got one envelope and one filter but all of them their job is to process audio from the oscillator outputs and that gives us room over here to put all the cv and clocking data together it's messy it's all over the damn place but at least it's in a column by itself and then finally at the end we have the mixer output straight to the two outputs. So there we go. And we're at 97.7. This is definitely not a dub track. As I said, I never really started out with that in mind. It's going to have some kind of Game Boy or Lo-Fi name. Uh, let's call it. No idea what to call it. Uh, <laughs> Let's call it reduction seek because we do a lot of sample rate reduction here. And it's a sequence. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> my brain is blank. But I kind of like it. Just check it out for a sec. The hi hat and the tune kick are the repeating pattern that kind of keeps it together. And the other bits are kind of weird and crazy. Let's turn them down a little bit to balance them out. Yeah. Neat. I like it. I don't need to save it in the synth. Am I even forgetting that? I don't think so. I missed 71, so I'll go back and fix that. Anyway, thank you for joining us for the stream. Uh, I'm going to keep 
I, I may come back with another dub track. I may come back with something new. I'm going to give myself the freedom just to explore that. But I uh, really do appreciate everyone tuning in. I will be here. I am the very Reverend Father Moo. And it's been another lovely Sunday. Peace.